It takes a while to get to the last free place in America. 140 miles east of San Diego, farmland turns to dusty towns, which turn to parched desert land. This guard post tells us we're close. This whole place used to be a military base. They left concrete slabs, giving RVs a place to park and inspiring the city's name. Soon you start to see Slab City's makeshift homes. Some come here to escape society. Some are destitute. You'll see when we pull the ropes up. And every year, this motley community does the unlikeliest thing. They throw a prom. They say they do it because so many of them didn't go to their own prom. It doesn't matter how you got here. We're just very happy that you came. Earlier that day, Bill Ammon is setting up for the big night. Well, it's all trial and error. But... He goes by Builder Bill. His wife has been gathering dresses from thrift stores for people to borrow. 16 years ago, Builder Bill was working construction in San Diego. Jobs dried up. Soon he was living out of his van. He calls Slab City the end of the rope. You can retreat and you can retreat and you can retreat. And then there's just one last little knot on the end of the rope. That's Slab City. There might be some Baileys left over there, though. But he says Slab City is also freedom. Freedom from rent or loans, freedom from zoning laws, and freedom from harassment. Slab City, you can just sit down and s occupy a spot on the planet without any debt, indebtedness, persecution. Of course, freedom has a price. There's no electricity here, no water, no sewer system. It may be free, but it's also free from garbage pickup. It's, it's just a piece of useless, unwanted, unusable desert. And that's why we've been allowed to be here all these years. All right. The state of California owns this land. No one really knows how much it would cost to clean up the place. There may also be munitions and military waste buried out here. The federal government is looking into that now. The state is open to selling the land, and for the first time, Slab City residents are applying to buy it. I got to thinking, well, if the state's getting ready to unhorse this land, we all depend on this place. And, and so I took a pretty big alarm and said, hey, we got to do something, you know. I get to sling the bike. Builder Bill helped form a community group. Slab resident Lynn Bright put together the application to buy the land. She says they need to preserve Slab City from outside development. If we do nothing and don't organize, then who's the head that's going to pop up and say, hey, wait a minute, not here? Who's going to do that? Nobody. It's not clear who would want to buy and develop this land, but the mere threat of a sale has shifted the thinking out here. By organizing to save Slab City, some are worried they'll lose the thing that has made it a refuge for so many, the freedom. I always stay at the top here just to make sure I have my bearings. Gary Brown came to Slab City seven years ago. He took a sabbatical from the IT industry. When he tried to re-enter in 2008 at age 56, it was tough. Who wants to hire an old, ugly old man when you can get a kid from Mumbai for 25 bucks? <laughs> Brown devised a way to live in the desert year-round. He built an insulated room inside his RV where he can control the temperature. He calls it the cool cube. And this cool tropical breeze <laughs> just washes all over my body. And it, becomes a zen-like experience. Brown is adamantly against slab residents organizing to purchase the land. He says that that would bring the one thing slabbers fear most, a landlord. If this place has to submit to building codes, the slabs goes away. Brown wants the slabs to be there for people who hit rock bottom, including those fighting mental illness. So that the really crazy people can at least fit in and live and I think that's important. It was, went a long way to slaying my demons. But Bright says it's time to take responsibility of the land. Yep, we're going to have to help in a positive way um, in terms of cleanup. We're going to have to engage with different levels 
of government. She says they have no intention of charging rent. It was her late husband and Builder Bill who came up with the tagline, the last free place in America. We're going to have to grow up and still maintain somehow the last free place in America. Later at the Slab City prom, no one is thinking about land sales. There's a new prom king and queen. This year's prom king and queen. It will be months before the state decides whether to sell them this land. This poor community will then have to raise the money to buy it, which leaves the future of Slab City uncertain. But one thing is for certain, at this same time next year, they hope to be here at prom, wearing borrowed dresses, smiling for photos, and dancing under a desert sky. Angela Carone, KPBS News.